I have a feeling we're going to be a little bit choppy today thanks to the internet, but uh, I think, let me double check, the, yeah, mm, this is about as good as we're going to get. What's up, hacksters? It is Throwback Thursday, and I was talking to some people yesterday and realized that some people think that ham radio is a thing of the past. Um, this is something that I'm currently learning, for reasons I will explain later, but just in case you were wondering, amateur radio is still plenty alive and kicking, and there are tons of nerds the world around who are using it. I guess not just nerds, but, you know, a lot of nerds. <laughs> Let's be honest. I mean that in a good way, as usual. As a side note, I've spent much of today and will be spending tomorrow at Hardware.io, that's W-E-A-R, which is a conference for hardware security that usually happens in the Netherlands, but is happening in Santa Clara right now. They had two days of workshops, and today was full of interesting talks, um, some more workshops, and also a hardware capture the flag, or CTF, which is really fun, and I wish I could talk about it right now, but I don't want to spoil it for people who are still playing. So, maybe after tomorrow we'll talk about that. Anyway, on to the subject of our video. So, there's a National Association for Amateur Radio, and apparently, within California even, um, even like close to the Bay Area, there's enough local organizations doing stuff around this and running exams that apparently around every two weeks you have an opportunity to take the exam to get your technician's license, which is the sort of basic license that most people get. So you'll study up, you actually look at the questions that are on the exam, memorize them or internalize them, and then a certain subset, a random subset of those are asked at each exam. So people do this thing called ham crams, where a bunch of people get together and just memorize all the stuff they need to learn for their next uh, testing level, and then they take the exam together. There is also going to be an exam at DEF CON, and a couple of us are going to be there. Alvaro of Unnamed Reverse Engineering Podcast, where is that? Uh, unnamed, are you? here we go, mm, is going to be, uh, well, we talked about it today, and he said that he's going to be trying to take it, uh, his next level as well, so that should be fun. You should come take it too. It'll be great. <laughs> um, so, ham radio, amateur radio, people learning how to build their own radio systems. There's a lot of these stuff in these questions about how you build and connect your own radio system. But first up, why would you want to do this? So first up, there's a lot of people who use it as volunteers for emergency corps. So if you want to be useful in an emergency situation, providing long distance communications, there's all these, a couple of groups, apparently Races and Aries are both um, sort of amateur radio for uh, ways to volunteer your equipment and your expertise and just being a connection point in the case of emergencies. Now, an interesting point, this has actually been augmented now by this app Zello, which is apparently a sort of walkie-talkie app that people were using, for example, to organize volunteers and rescues during uh, Hurricane Harvey. And so that's another option if you want to get involved with, you know, community support efforts. But we're talking about radio, so <laughs> this is another way that people can definitely get involved. In fact, my favorite movie, Buckaroo Banzai, The Adventures of Buckaroo Banzai Across the Eighth Dimension, heavily features a pair of people, like a father and son, who are into ham radio, and uh, they help save the day. Which is definitely a thing people do. Um, you can also use it to talk to space stations. Not only the ISS, which has a ham radio station on it, uh, but also model craft, but also, oh yeah, also anything apparently 50 kilometers or above counts as a space station, and that's way higher than like a weather balloon goes, but I'm curious about like if anyone's done an amateur, like they must have done amateur space station, I don't know, how does it work? There's so many questions that arise during this that I'm considering doing my own little sort of I'm learning ham radio, let's go through it together kind of series. Mm, you can talk to model craft with it. Yeah, there's like automated signals. You can also run your own ham radio station or talk to ham radio frequencies via the internet. You still need a license, but there's all these ways that, for example, you can, you can tune into special, um, special groups for, that have their own protocols for doing this stuff over the internet. 
so you don't need an entire rig. But as you will see on Hackster and beyond, there's plenty of people building stuff their own hardware for doing ham radio. So for example, this radio astronomy with RTL SDR, SDR is software defined radio on the Pi with Amazon AWS by Mario Canustra. Uh, you've got someone else doing SDR on an FPGA using the Digilent Arty Z710, which uses a Xilinx Arctic 7 chip. Cool. You've got an amateur radio power, like portable power for your Raspberry Pi. Very cool. And actually, um, I've got this Maker Solar Kit from Crowd Supply that would be kind of cool to use with this. And then this person has a Raspberry Pi amateur radio digital clock. So they, I think they're retrieving the time over ham radio and they're displaying it. Or maybe it's just for ham radio. So. Let's see, amateur radio, aka ham radio, use a 24 hour universal UTC for much of their operation. So I guess they're just showing you a UTC. Oh no! So it's getting its time from NTP servers via the internet. Cool. So I guess it's, it's useful to tell what time zone you're talking to. Anyway, tons of cool stuff. Uh, we're not the only place that has projects like this. You've got this uh, 10 amateur user radio, this is for the Raspberry Pi. You've got this amazing site. Look at the design. Look at that GIF. Oh, it's so good. Have radio the Raspberry Pi. Oh, look at that background. Oh my goodness. I'm amazed that there's no blink tags on this page. Uh, that would just really put the, put the cherry on top. But yeah, all kinds of cool stuff here. Oh, look at that. Unlocking the pie. Element 14, go you! Wow, so cool. Um, yeah, so all kinds of stuff you can build. There's also Adafruit has a uh, transceiver radio bonnet for the Raspberry Pi, 433 megahertz. Um, and yeah, yeah. So this adds those capabilities to your Pi. It says, compared to the 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi slash Bluetooth radios on the Pi already, these modules run at 433 or 900 megahertz, which is sub gigahertz. You can't send data as fast, but you can send data a lot farther. Now, I'm not sure this actually works for ham radio because, I mean, I found it by searching for ham radio, but there are very specific bands that you can use I think this this is one, but I could be wrong. Anyway, um, <laughs> I should have double checked that first. I really thought that that was a ham radio module. We'll find out. I'm sure someone will tell me in the comments. But um, oh yeah, the other fun thing about this, I saw in one of these tutorials, someone had capitalized ham, uh, H A M, as though it were a an acronym. It's actually called that because here comes your T B T part. Um, back in, let's find out, the 19th century, so in the 1800s, when people were just starting to do amateur radio, uh, the people who were professionals would make fun of the amateurs, saying that they were ham-fisted, which is probably pretty accurate. Um, I will definitely be pretty ham-fisted uh, while I'm starting, meaning that I'm very bad at it. At least we don't have to all do Morse code anymore. You can still do Morse code on uh, ham radio. In fact, there's certain frequencies that are reserved for that, and it's useful in other cases as well. They also call it CW code, I think. And yeah, so I wanted to show you really quick an app that I've been using to learn this stuff. It is called HRE Tech. Let me show you. Oh yeah, there's all these great terms around it as well, including open the squelch. So the squelch is like this, um, it's sort of like a noise gate that prevents your speakers from making noise unless there is a sufficiently loud signal, uh, high amplitude signal coming out of your radio. So that, for example, if you um, are just getting noise, then it's not gonna uh, 
play that at you, so you get a lot less of that static. However, once someone starts talking, presumably it gets much louder, and then you'el be able to hear the stuff. It'll open the squelch. And I just had a field day with that phrase. It's, just, it's ridiculous. You gotta open the squelch. Anyway, so the way this app works um, is that you can study the correct answers, and then you go on and take a section quiz for each of those sections, and then you go on and you can take a sample test. Now, some of the interesting stuff for electronics people comes in around uh, the five section, sections five and six. So for example, like capacitance and inductance, how do you calculate power? Things like this. I've already been through this section, so. <laughs> Oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no, didn't read the question properly. Mm -hmm. So a lot of this stuff, electronics nerds will already know, but also a lot of this stuff would be useful to review. For example, a bunch of different exercises for working with Ohm's law about, you know, how you get voltage, current, and um, resistance all calculated. So if you've got 10 ohm resistors, to, so you multiply the resistance by the current and you get 20 volts. Do, 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 do. Calculation current equals voltage divided by resistance, etc. So you get to really review Ohm's law and stuff. Then there's other stuff about uh, circuit diagrams and schematic systems. Oh, <laughs> but yeah, here we go. Here, what is component four in figure T3? So component four is up here. It's gonna be an antenna. What is component eight? We gotta blow this up a little bit. Uh, well, it's right there. You can kind of see it. And that looks like an LED, doesn't it? You've got a diode symbol with two little arrows coming off of it, which indicates the light coming out, LED. Then you've got component six, that looks like a capacitor. And so yeah, you know, you're probably gonna have a really easy time with this. There are other things that are more procedural, like when can you use, like, what, what kinds of language do you use to announce different things, which frequencies are used for what, who can, uh, who's responsible for running a station, um, what kinds of stuff you can do with different licenses. Then there's really fascinating stuff about how, for example, uh, it gets into these, these um, atmospheric phenomena, like, and, and other things like sunspots and how those affect things and meteor showers and tropospheric ducting when the temperatures invert in the atmosphere like all this stuff is affecting how your radio waves propagate which if you're building something with bluetooth or whatever um i mean it, i don't think it's the same frequency ranges but you know that's stuff that you still have to think about like for example for bluetooth we have to think about vertical columns of water aka people when you're talking about how your signal propagates and how far it can go and stuff. So uh, thinking about the different ways that waves can reflect around and do knife edge diffraction around objects is really interesting. And it's something that I never had, like learned before because I mostly just started out with Arduino and like making speakers and little instruments and things and then little wearable tech things. And uh, it's really exciting to be learning this stuff and I feel like it's deepening my knowledge. Every time I come up against something that I haven't learned before, I get to go down a Wikipedia hole which has pluses and minuses, but I figure by the time it gets to DEF CON, I'll have all this stuff down and I'll have learned a bunch of interesting things, like what's later on? I don't know, different types of antennas? Like this is stuff that could be really useful um, just for, you know, all kinds of electronics and especially getting into LoRa, so like low power, long range radio communications between devices. I think this is gonna be something to be really easy, in, um, <laughs> really useful to know because uh, we're talking about, you know, communicating with radios between devices across a city or whatever, and that's where a lot of this stuff is gonna come in. So, very exciting. That's, the app is called HRE Tech. HRE dash tech. And it's free. It's got some little non-invasive advertisements. It's pretty awesome. I uh, highly recommend just jumping into this. I, you know, it, it could be useful someday. 
if something happens in your area, like <laughs> wildfires, like when our entire state is on fire again, that could, <laughs> hopefully it won't come in handy, but it could, you know? Uh, and then, you know, besides that, I'm curious to chat with people in other languages and around the world and maybe even do a moon bounce. Oh, yeah! So EME, or Earth Moon Earth Transmissions, are when you fire a radio signal at the moon, it bounces off, reflects back at you, and then you pick up that signal, and you need... You can do this as an amateur radio tech. You just need a very big antenna, and I've seen inflatable antennas for doing stuff like that, which is ridiculous. Um, in fact, this isn't with um, ham radio, but my friend Nick, uh, Martine, acquaintance, I don't know, we've, we've run into each other a couple of times and I, she's helped me bounce my voice off of the moon uh, with a radio telescope uh, at, I think you call it, say, Dwingaloo or Dwingaloo, something like that. Um, she collaborates with people at this massive radio telescope and you Skype to those radio techs and then they bounce your Skype signal <laughs> off of the moon and back and then you get to hear your voice as though you were Nick or uh, Neil T Armstrong or something. It sounds like this, you know, uh, and then your kind of distortion voice. Um, and you can do that yourself if you just have a really big antenna and a ham radio license that allows you to transmit to space. It's so cool! I mean, I love space. I love magical mystery air signals. <laughs> like, uh, and I, I'm really excited to be studying this stuff. So, stay tuned. I might talk some more about this later on. I might build some ham radio stuff. In the meantime, I'm probably going to try and do a sort of personal series on just studying this stuff. Come take the test with us at DEF CON. Now that I've actually given myself a deadline, it's a little bit terrifying, but I'm about halfway through the questions. Um, yeah, tell us what you're using it for and stuff. Let's, let's look at the comments before we shut this down. Shane says, keep up the good work. Thank you. Thanks, Shane. Jay says, what if something answers back? <laughs> uh, I mean, hopefully if you're broadcasting to the Earth, something will answer back. Ideally, you won't be broadcasting out. You probably honestly won't be able to get anything much farther than that as an amateur without like breaching regulations or something. If something answers back from the moon, then maybe we're in trouble. But you know, we'll find out. Curiosity! Wait, that's Mars. <laughs> Exploration. What's what's a good um, moon moon word? Anyway, okay. That's it for Throwback Thursday. <laughs> I'm Alex Glow with Hackster.io. Hack on! I always forget my cat.